Ah! I almost just fell. Oh my god. I'm in my closet. I almost just fell into my door. That would have not been good. Alright, so first of all, this video is probably pretty long, so if you clicked on it, congratulations, you actually want to learn something. That being said, time is valuable, and although I recommend you watch this entire thing, uh, I left some timestamps in the description and the pinned comment if you're looking for something specific. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the video. <laughs> So, you've decided you want to create a story time animation channel. Great, cool, fantastic. Uh, just make sure you ask yourself why. If you came here for quick fame and fortune, you're in the wrong place. Animation videos take a long time to make, so expect to be sitting in your room by yourself for hours a day. You want to make sure you're truly having fun, so don't waste your time thinking this is some kind of get-rich-quick kind of deal. If this dose of reality doesn't scare you off, then good job, you probably legitimately enjoy watching story time animations and want to make your own videos, purely for people to enjoy. Animation can also get expensive once you start getting more professional, but in this video, I'll try and teach you how to start up a channel using what you already have, that way you can't use money as an excuse. What I believe one of the most important steps in creating a YouTube channel of any kind is your channel name. Your brand is really important, as it's what people know you by forever. I suppose you could always rebrand down the line, but rebranding is a little risky because not everyone will recognize you. You might lose some of your following, so keep that in mind. Now you're probably wondering, how do I create a good name? Good question, uh, um, hard to answer. If you're creating an animation channel, the obvious choice would be to put animations or animates in the name, right? Although that's what a lot of people have done, that's just the problem. That's what a lot of people have done. You need a name that's original and easy to remember. What I did was put it out a couple of days just to come up with name ideas and wrote them down in the notepad. Took some of my favorite things and wrote those down, some rhymes I thought sounded good, anything that felt personal. After that, just try and narrow it down until you have something that you're happy with and you would be comfortable with people calling you by. It also helps if people can shorten it when they're talking to you. For me, uh, people don't really call me Spork Not Fork. They call me Spork. Don't forget you can use your real name as well. There are endless possible first and last name combinations, so the chances you and someone else have the same exact name are pretty rare. As an example, you can turn to someone like, it's Alex Clark. He just used his name with a little something extra at the beginning. You can also use a nickname your friends or family gave you, like an infamous swoosh. No matter what you decide to go by, make sure you like it. Don't choose anything that you'll regret a couple years down the line. When it comes to how your character is designed, it's mostly subjective, as you can do whatever you want. But one of the biggest things people are trying to look for in a character is originality. Trying to be original is pretty hard, there's so many characters out there it might be impossible to be 100% original, but I do have some things that should help guide you in the right direction. The first thing I'll get out of the way is that your character doesn't necessarily have to look like you. If you look at my character, he has puffy hair, despite me having shorter hair in real life. If you wear glasses but hate drawing glasses, don't draw glasses. You don't even need a human character, for example, Katsun. Cat is obviously not an anthropomorphic cat, but they design their character as an animal. This is perfectly fine. Another thing to consider is your personality. Since this character is what you're going to be talking through, it makes more sense that the character reflects at least a little bit of your personality. If you're a loud and obnoxious person, then you probably shouldn't draw a character that looks calm and peaceful. Sometimes it can feel a little off. Something else I recommend is making a relatively simple design. By simple, I don't mean boring, I just mean not super detailed. If your character has dragon wings, and drawing each individual scale is kind of a waste of time. Of course, that's just my opinion, but I feel like if you're just starting off, making a super extravagant character is probably not for the best. Over time, your artistic abilities and speed of what you draw will all improve, so once you get more comfortable, that's when I recommend adding those types of details. Your character's probably also going to have accessories, and this is good. Don't go overboard, but something that defines the character even more will make them uh, more memorable. If you want to stand out completely, then think outside the box. My character is a ghost, which I'm sure has been done before, but uh, it's a little something that puts me apart from the average kid in his room that you see everywhere. For color schemes, try and choose them effectively. If you understand the basics of good colors, it's going to go a long way. You don't know how many designs I've seen with bright, contrasting colors that are hard to look at. A tool I like to use is coolers. It'll just generate random color schemes that work together. What I would do is put in a skin tone or a color that you know you want in the design, lock it by clicking the lock, and generate. Don't like the colors? Just keep generating until you find some you do. This is a quick and easy way to get colors that work together. I'm not a professional or anything, so it's just super basic stuff, but if you want a little more detail on the design process, I'll leave some helpful links in the description. Just keep in mind you're designing to animate and not to illustrate. Now, for your art style, it's not really something that can be taught. What I would do is sit down with a paper and a pencil and just draw something. No references, just straight from your own mind. Most of the time, your brain will take your favorite parts of every artist's style you've seen and mesh them together into something original. That's your art style. It'll evolve over time as you discover faster and more appealing ways to draw, but this is a practice I like to do. Another way I found my art style was drawing characters from memory. I wasn't trying to replicate how the character was drawn, but rather what features the character had that made them definable. Usually that ends up with you drawing the character in your style. Like I said, there isn't really a way to teach you how to find your style, but that's mostly because everyone is different. Find your style in whatever way works for you.
Coming up with ideas for videos is hard, so I've decided to break it down a little. Step one is to decide what style of video you're making. If you're watching this video, you're most likely making a story time channel, so all you're going to want to do is try and think of major or impactful events that you've experienced. If you want to make a skit, focus on the joke and its execution. Making a YouTuber animated, find the portion of the video you like and animate that. After you know what style you're going for, you should go into step two, something I call bullet points, even though I don't technically use bullet points. All of my videos are in a checklist, and underneath each topic are things I plan to talk about. For example, my Bakugan video I wrote, I stole from that one kid, the video game. I made sure to include the biggest points I wanted to talk about to remind me later in the scripting process. Here I plan on including gameplay, thus the video game, but wasn't able to for reasons that aren't important to this video. You're all over the net! If you're making a story video, then try not to make up anything either. If you're fabricating a story, then don't mark it as something that actually happened. I recommend a disclaimer or something, making sure people realize that what they're about to watch is based on or isn't a true story. In the end, there's no way I can teach you to think. Whatever you want to do for your video, you can do. Many people find scripting to be the hardest part of a video process, something I can kind of agree with. Although technically you don't even need a script, you can just record yourself telling the story, scripts make it easier to plan out what you're going to say and what's going on. They give you a basic outline as to what needs to happen in your video. These videos are primarily story driven, so no matter what the art's like, if you can script an engaging and interesting video, then you're golden. Something that I feel is important is how you actually structure your scripts. If done the right way, it'll make your animation way easier, and I'll get to that a little more in the next section. Personally, I write my scripts like an essay, which is a really bad habit, so I'm going to teach you the format your script should follow. At the beginning of each scene, you should declare the location. State whether it's interior or exterior, put a description of the location, and determine if it's day or night. Usually these are done in all capital letters. Underneath this is where you describe the action that's happening during or before the dialogue. Make sure you don't indent. For the dialogue, put who's talking in the middle of the page, written in all caps. The lines of dialogue would finally be underneath that, indented. Since not every scene is going to include an exchange in dialogue, you could write narration as the speaker for the majority of the script, or just do it like an essay if you really want to. Another question is what do you script in? Well, I recommend Google Docs because it's easy, uh, you can access it anywhere just by signing in, and you don't even need to download it, you can use it online. I wrote the script for this video on three different devices, all while at home, at school, wherever. It just makes it super convenient. Animating and need to take a bathroom break? Start scripting your next video! <laughs> If you've written your script correctly, then storyboard should be a piece of cake. You've already written down what's going to happen in each scene, now you just need to draw it out. When storyboarding, try not to draw super detailed, all you're doing is trying to get the motion down. This is also where you could decide uh, what assets, backgrounds, and one-off characters are going to look like. Remember that you're going to be redrawing everything, so no need to be super accurate with every line. When it comes to what you make your boards with, it's really up to you. Some people like to use sticky notes, others use the actual board sheets. Still others like to make them digitally. It doesn't really matter what you do them with, as long as you've done them well enough that you know exactly what you need to animate. This is another situation where it's not really necessary to do this, a lot of people don't, but planning is really important. In the end, it will save you time. You'll be able to see what actions work, catch any errors in the story's pacing, and if you don't like how something came out, then you didn't just waste your time animating it. To conclude this segment, I'll just say that I highly recommend boarding your video before you start production. As an aspiring voice actor, this part is kind of my niche, so if I end up going overboard, sorry about that. One thing you need to keep in mind is that people are relying on not only your art to convey the story, but your voice as well. They can't see your face, so you need to show emotion in how you speak. If you say something like, Hey, stop that! It comes off a lot differently than if you were to say it like, Hey, stop that! when acting try and get into the situation. In the case of story time, you've already experienced it, so try and get into the mindset that you were in at the time. Don't be afraid to speak up either, it can always be kind of awkward if someone's whispering their lines. When it comes to what you record with, it depends on what you have. If you have a microphone, use it. If not, you can use your phone and record lines that way. If you do have a microphone and a computer of any kind, I recommend you record in the program called Audacity. Sure you've heard of it, it's arguably the most popular audio recording and editing software out right now, and the fact that it's completely free is amazing. Another thing I should probably address is pop filters. A lot of people think they're necessary. Necessary, they're really not. All you have to do is speak at an angle. Here's an example. This is with my pop filter, Papa's pepperoni pizza. This is without my pop filter, speaking at an angle, Papa's pepperoni pizza. Personally, I use a pop filter, but at the beginning, it's not really necessary. If you don't have a mic and you're recording on your phone, that's okay too. All you need to do is find a voice recording app. I have an iPhone and use the pre-installed voice memos for lines on the go. If you want to see the power of voice memos with some noise reduction on Audacity, watch my Bakugan video. The audio for that video was entirely recorded using my phone. When it comes to recording on Android, it's hard for me to say since I don't have one. I would just look through the Play Store and try and find something with good reviews. Alright, so the next most important thing is where you record. Uh, try and go in some place where there's no background noise. Most people just use their closet. After that, try and remove any echo by patting stuff up. If you're in your closet, then the clothes will help, but I recommend adding pillows and blankets until the space sounds as dead as you can get it. You want to do this because the audio right now sounds a lot better than if... If I were to record over here. 
or maybe even out here. You can fix some of it in post, but it's better to get things right from the get-go. Overall, this step is pretty simple. Just try and get the best sounding audio you can with what you have. Much like the recording step, editing depends on whether or not you have a computer. Either way though, you should be removing the same things. First and foremost, get rid of any bad line takes, this one is obvious. Also try and clip the lines so they're fairly close together. Keeping things tight will make sure people don't get super bored. Most of the time though, you should be able to hear what sounds natural, so just go with your gut. If you're using a computer to edit, then I highly recommend Audacity. In Audacity, all you have to do is throw on some noise reduction by selecting a quiet area, then going to Filter, Noise Reduction, and Get Noise Profile. After it does its thing, select everything and do it again. This time, just click OK. This will remove the static you might hear in the background. After you finish everything and explore it and stuff, something I like to do is throw it into a program called Levelator. All this does is make the lows and the highs of the audio equal so that people don't have to keep messing with their volume. Links to everything I mentioned are in the description under this section. If you're using your mobile device for audio editing, then you don't have as many options. On the iPhone, the previously mentioned voice memos allows you to cut stuff out. When it comes to Android, still not really sure what you have available, but look up audio editor in the store and I'm sure you'll find something free. If not, you can always just edit the audio in your video editing software. The only downside to mobile audio editing is no noise reduction. Kinda sucks, you might hear some static, but what can you do? Welcome to the main reason most of you are probably here. Animation. For those of you who didn't read this title card for some reason, this is animation on the computer section. Like I briefly mentioned in the introduction, I'm going to teach you guys what to do if you don't have any money to spend on programs. First thing you need to do is draw out all of your frames. This would include any poses, logos, titles, anything you want to be drawn in the video. Since most of you probably don't have a drawing tablet, I'm going to teach you how to do this with a mouse. If you do have a tablet though, same things apply, you're just going to be able to do them a little bit faster. This is the computer section, so I'd imagine all of you have a computer. If not, then... Uh, so first thing you're gonna do is get a drawing program called Paint Tool Sci. It's which is free, free if you, you know where to look. look. Unless you have like a drawing tablet, then use Fire Alpaca, as, then that's actually free. Open Sci and set your dimensions to 1920 by 1080, a nice HD 16 to 9 ratio. If your computer is a little slower than 1280 by 720, also works. Either way, just remember what you use. For this example, I'll go with 1080p. The only reason I like using Sci when drawing with a mouse is because it has a really cool line tool that you can do really cool things to. Just take a look. It allows you to click on points and add curves between them. And just click on this tool and you're good to go. Now this looks good, but if you're like me and you like something with some nice line variation, then here's a cool trick. If you click on this tool right here, it allows you to add or subtract width from a point. Using this you can create the illusion of a line that's been drawn with a tablet. Pretty epic, right? Make sure you construct your character in parts. That way when you draw different poses, you're able to reuse as much as possible. Although I don't recommend doing this next thing without an animation software because it takes a really long time. If you do want to do lip sync, then just draw all the mouths on a separate layer inside of a folder and export all the poses without a mouth. Then export each mouth by itself. If you don't really care about lip sync, then exporting each pose with a simple open and close mouth is fine and a lot faster. Just remember, sometimes you're going to want quality over quantity. I'm going to show you how to do both later, so don't worry. Make sure everything was exported as a PNG and we're good to go. Oh, also, Paint Tool Sci is a only for Windows program, so if you have a Mac and no drawing tablet, then I highly recommend drawing on your phone if you can. I don't know of any other free programs that have a line tool as good as size. I know Metabang has one, but I don't know if you can do the width. If you can't, then drawing on paper always works. For the actual animation portion, you have a lot more flexibility than you would think. If you want a more simple style video that's just a series of images, then iMovie or Windows Movie Maker will do the trick. But if you do want to get a little more advanced and do things like lip sync, then something with a little more umph would probably work better. I've heard good things about DaVinci Resolve, so I decided to download it just to show you guys. Hey guys, Spork here with the live recording segment. Uh, like I said a second ago, we're using HitFilm and not DaVinci because my computer can't really handle DaVinci and recording at the same time. But anyway, let's get right into it. Okay, so first of all, you're going to come over here and click New or, or Open if you already have a document running, but we're doing New because we're starting a new one. Here at Width and Height and Frame Rate, actually. Frame Rate, I would do 24 most of the time. I like I'm starting to do 24. I like doing 30 usually, but um, we're going to do 24. As for width and height, make sure you do the same as your drawing dimensions. So if you did 1280 by 720, you would put that in here. Um, I have 1920 by 1080. Uh, you can also come up here and look for um, presets. So 1080p full 24 FPS is an option. Don't do 23.976. It's really close to 24, but after a while there starts to being lag and it kind of messes up. So just make sure you do 24 or 30 if you prefer 30. All right, over in the rendering tab, you can leave most of this the same. I wouldn't really touch anything um, and just click OK when you have all your settings complete. All right, so as you can see, HitFilm has opened. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro, this UI might look fairly similar. I was actually surprised by how it looked. I'm going to close the meters tab because we don't really need that for this. To import your media, just click import and it opens your files. Um, I'm going to do animation example. We're going to start with 
uh, the not lip sync because it's easier for me. So we're just gonna import all our poses and stuff. I'm just gonna do two. I'm gonna do arm up three and arm side three and my audio actually. After having those selected, I'm gonna click open and it opens them in here. I can see we have arms to the side, arms up, and we have my audio. So first things first, drag your audio to audio one. If you want to use a, another audio track, you can. You're probably going to if you have like voice effects or something. Now to zoom in, um, the easiest way I've seen is just come down to this slider and drag it over just so that it opens up. And you're gonna to wanna to be frame by frame eventually, but for now, we're just gonna stretch it to this far. Now that you have your audio in your timeline, you're just going to drag both of your poses onto the timeline in whatever order you want. So I'm going to start with the arms to the side. And I'm going to grab my cut tool and split just somewhere over here. It doesn't really matter where. Click on it and click the delete key and bring in my arms up. And do the same thing, but with the end of the audio. I'm going to be shifting these around, but it's fine for now. Now you're just going to want to scrub through your audio and put in the poses at the point that you want them. So I'm going to rearrange these so they line up better with the audio and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've shifted these around so that they go on cue around here. So it sounds something like this so far. Hey guys, Thick Man here and today we're talking about my random thoughts. I'm actually going to... At that point, just get rid of it. There we go. <laughs> now comes the surprisingly simple part, but it might be kind of confusing. I want to mute this audio for now so that when I scrub through, you don't hear anything. It makes it sound a little more professional. <laughs> Basically, you're just going to go between the two points and zoom right on in there. Make sure that you can have just a big segment per frame. Like this right here would be one frame's worth. I like it pretty big. I zoom in all the way if I'm doing the frame by frame stuff, but you can zoom in however much you want. Now comes the issue of... Um, warping them to have that little bounce effect. Now I'm going to explain this all in a second, but if you look at this and you're going to try and scale it, when you do that, it looks kind of bad. <laughs> That's because it's scaling from right here, which is our anchor point. Um, the problem with that is we don't want that to be our anchor point. So we're going to come over here. You're probably in media. Just come over and click controls and all of these will be closed. Just click on the transform arrow right next to there. Uh, make sure you're on your clip that you want to be transforming. See where anchor point is, zero, zero. That means it's in the middle. You're just going to drag these anchor points. As you can see, your character is moving. It's actually the anchor point that's moving. And you want to drag the anchor point right to the bottom of the character. You can have a little bit over. I like having it a little underneath the bottom of the character. But as you can see, if you click right there, um, he's on the bottom and then you want to brag take this guy bring him back to the corner it doesn't have to be a hundred percent exact but try and get it as close as you can I'm gonna zoom in here um, go all the way to the corner scroll wheel to zoom in and just use my arrow keys to nudge it so that this blue bar is back in the corner better go over the better to go over the corner than not enough and I'm going to come back, scale to fit. Now, as you can see, our character is back where he goes. And if we come over here, unlink these and scale it, he scales from that point. That's exactly what we want. Perfect. Now we're going to come over here to this guy and do the exact same thing. You're going to be doing this for every pose that you have. Um, there might be easier ways to do this, but this seems like the most straightforward way if you ask me. So I'm going to line this guy up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now that the anchor points are at the bottom of each character, we can actually get to the bounce animation that you're all looking for with this free editing program. And it's super easy, actually. All you have to do is go to your split tool or your um, razor blade thing. And just click exactly one frame at the end of this guy and one frame at the beginning of this guy. Now that you have those, you just need to go to your frame. And this is why we did the anchor point before, because now the anchor point is already set for this split frame. And we're just going to go over back to our transform menu and go to scale. Uh, make sure this link is broken so there's a space between it. And take the second 100, which is the Y axis, and scale it down. And it doesn't have to be too much. Just scale it down enough, maybe 93 for this example. So he goes down. And even just that looks okay. 
and you can just leave it there or you can go over the top like me and click on the second frame that we cut make sure it's unlinked take the y move it up just move them up a little bit there let's get this to 25 percent so you can see the box above there like something like this and that honestly doesn't look too bad but we're gonna make it a little bit different maybe spice it up a little bit these are all different variations of it sorry you can hear that computer fan behind me it's really loud so we're gonna drag this down drag this down extend this frame by two so this is a two long frame so it looks like this oops that was a bad preview so it's down a little longer and then pops up now what we're going to do is take this frame go to rotation and rotate it slightly over here not much but just so that he goes down like that and he's going to come back up and when he comes up we're going to rotate it this way slightly so he'll go down, up, and back to the neutral pose. So it looks something like this. And having that little bit of rotation makes it look a little more lively than if it's just being stretched up and down. But that's basically how you would do that. And to add a background, obviously, if you wanted a background, you would just need a, another file behind it. I just realized I didn't color in this guy's head, so I would do like a circle of white behind it. Um, because I didn't fill in any of the mouths either. <laughs> and with all of that, this is what it would look like with the audio. Hey guys, Stickman here, and today we're talking about my random thoughts. As you can see, not the best, but it's honestly not that bad if you're just beginning a animation channel or a story time channel or anything. Hey guys, stick man here, and today we're talking about... See, see, it works. You know, there's no in-betweens, there's no anything. These are um, squash and stretches, anticipation, um, but most of it is honestly fine. You don't even have to do the rotation. I like the rotation because I think it adds a little more um, life to the character, but you don't honestly need to do that. Okay, now that you've seen all of that, I'm going to show you how to do lip sync if you wanted lip sync, and this is very difficult to do. I guess it's not difficult, but um, in a, in a editing program like this, it's not the most convenient. So I'm going to delete all of these and go to my media, delete these. I don't need these anymore. Import, and we're going to import, we're just going to import one character without a mouth. I don't feel like doing a thing in between them. Drag the character in and split the end. As you can see, we have the character without a mouth. Now we're going to need a new video track, so I'm just going to drag this down. Click right here, insert track, video track 2. You can name these if you want. Um, like here we'll do mouth. Here we'll do... Um, oh, I didn't click save. Well, here we'll do body. Here we'll do mouth. I'm really bad with naming, but um, if you want to be organized, you can do that. Now we're just going to click import and import all of our mouths. I made a folder with all my mouths that I've drawn. So we're going to select all of them, open. You would normally name them by what mouth shape they are. I just did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, because it's, it's easier for me. Okay. And we can select all of these, all of these at the same time and drag all of them onto track one. Now, you don't need to do that because you don't, you're you not going to need all of them at the same time. If you just drag all of them down to be one frame long, um, I'll do that really fast um, with a video magic editing, the magic of video editing. But just make sure each mouth just has one long, like a frame length of one. And I'll be back in when I do that. <laughs> All right, now that all the mouths are on their own frames, uh, we can continue with our animating. If you want a mouth sheet, Domix made a good lip sync tutorial, so you can look at his mouth sheet and try and base your mouths off of that. I just have simple mouths that honestly will probably look really bad, but you know, it's, it's fine. I don't mind that much. But I will say that make sure your mouths will look good like with each other. So like how the open will go down like that. And then we have the teeth and then the teeth and then that would go into um in o if we wanted to so i don't know just make sure all your mouths you have all the mouths you need i don't have an l but um i'll just use a different mouth for that basically all you're going to do now is just go through scrub through your audio and copy and paste the mouth that you need for that part so 
I'm gonna go through and try and lip sync most of this. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Like here, we'll do a little bit for you live. Like, let's do this. H, so it's a uh, hey guys. So we're gonna do, uh, let's grab this mouth. We're just gonna do control C. Come over here, control V. Um, I think you can color these if I'm not mistaken. So I'll make this one red just to show the end position. Um, so it makes it easier for you guys. But this is going to be our first mouth. Hey. So we can make this two frames long. And if you're using the um, pointer arrow thing, you can just drag frames longer or shorter, obviously. This definitely isn't a HitFilm Express tutorial. It's more of a how to do the animation in an editing program tutorial. If you want in-depth tutorials on HitFilm, um, look them up on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find plenty. I don't use HitFilm personally. I use um, Premiere. It's not down here. But um, I use Premiere. Sometimes this uh, Windows Movie Studio Platinum. But rarely do I ever do that. I didn't mean to open that. Now I'm going to have to blur out the license. Basically, like I was saying, we're just going to go through and put in a mouth. So we have hey, guys. So it's going to be hey. So we're just going to go into an E. We'll use this as an E. So we're going to do control C, come over here, control V. And you would probably, instead of wanting to name these one, two, and three, just name them what sound they're making. Guys, so we're going to go into a G. Uh, we can use this one. And if you get confused, the um, where this white thing is, is going to be showing the frame right after it. So if I have it right here, it shows nothing. If I have it right here, it shows this frame right here. Um, that's most editing programs are like that. But if you were confused on how that was working, that's, that's how that works. Okay, we have an S. So we're going to get this. Like I said earlier, I don't recommend um, lip syncing like this because it takes it's super time consuming. But if you want to lip sync uh, traditionally and draw each of the mouths, then I would actually recommend animating in Krita. Um, you don't have to draw everything in Krita. You can start off like this and then import it into Krita. But I don't have a tutorial on Krita. I don't really do tutorials. But if you do want to see a good Krita tutorial, um, Jesse J. Jones made a good video. I'm going to mention him a little bit later in the video as well. But he made a good Krita video on explaining the basics of how everything works. Um, if you can look things up, you'll find a bunch of things in there on YouTube and yeah that's basically it. I'm gonna go through and lip sync this to the best of my ability and I'll see you guys back when I'm done. Alright so I'm gonna split off this audio because I don't feel like doing all of it but uh yeah we're just gonna cut it down here and I'm gonna go to there. Maybe I'll extend it out a little bit so that it doesn't just stop abruptly. And yeah, I'll continue going through making sure this looks nice and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I've gone through and um, made sure all the lips look okay. They're not going to be great because I didn't really take much time when drawing the mouths. And I... if Okay, so Animate has this thing called um, Frame Picker. It used to be Keyframe Caddy as a plugin before Animate became a thing and it was just Flash. But that is extremely helpful for these. I also use Animate's auto lip sync sometimes, but it always fails. So like I always end up doing it by hand anyway. So if you know a way of doing like a symbol type thing in HitFilm, uh, drop a comment and I might pin it or something because, or at least heart it. Because I'm going to try, if any of you have advice during this video, just drop a comment and we'll heart it. And we can all help each other as a community. Anyway, after you're done doing all of your lip sync, um, a good rule of thumb is to come to the beginning Drag the frame down by one, sometimes two, depending on how bad you are at lip syncing on time. But drag the frame down by one, select everything, drag it over back to the beginning, and drag the end back down like that. And this is just to make all the mouths go before because, because sound is actually um, a lot slower than light. So you're going to be seeing things right before um, you hear things. And to kind of simulate that a little better, we move mouths uh, right before. I don't know if that's the reason. That's how I always assumed. Like, think of fireworks. You see it and then hear the boom like way afterward. But light moves faster than sound, so we want to kind of make it look a little more natural 
by moving the mouths a little before. There's also other reasons, but that's how I always imagined it. That might be wrong, I don't know. <laughs> Either way though, it does end up looking a little bit better. So this is what we got so far. Hey guys, stick man here. Hey guys, stick man here. Um, one of the frames looks like it's a little too long. Hey guys, stick right here somewhere around there let me try it let me fix that up a little bit where it drops down to right here we're gonna remove that and drag this frame all the way out and just leave this here and then come in and drag this and use seven um i don't actually have a single frame seven other than this one so we're gonna use this one and we're gonna put it in this spot and drag it up that might look a little better let's try it now hey guys stick man here and as you can see since i didn't really take time on the mouths and they're not drawn the difference between this mouth and this mouth is just that line because um, it was made very fast, but if you actually take time on drawing all of your mouths, you'll, yours will probably look a lot better. Hey guys, stick man here. But that doesn't look bad for not having an animation software. And I'm sure many of you can agree with that. Now, something I like to do if I'm swapping um, positions is the frames that I swap it, I'll also move the mouth, but that's a little too advanced. I'm not going to get into that right now. But this is basically how you would do that in an editing program on your computer that's completely free. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this live segment. I don't really know if I have anything else to tell you about. Um, maybe backgrounds, but um, I don't... If you want a video on how to make backgrounds, like um, my old videos had that ginger pale background, like his classic background, but I made my own version of it, my own colors and stuff. If you want to see how to make that in Photoshop, I can show you how to do that. Um, I can show you how to draw um, simple backgrounds that look nice if you want. I'm not very good at backgrounds, but, you know, uh, it's, it's whatever. Honestly, here, I can insert this track and bring it down to the bottom and just insert a color mat. So I would just go to my media and new. I don't know how to do this in here, so I'm doing this live with you guys. New. Composite shot. No, that's not what I want. New plane. I make a new plane. Make the color white. Hit OK. Make sure it matches the timeline. Click OK. Drag the new plane into here. And bam, we got a white background. Look at that. See, hit film isn't that hard to figure out. Jeff, if you want to get into making backgrounds, I can explain that maybe in another video. Um, I don't really explain that in this video too much. I don't. Think. I don't actually remember maybe I'm lying and I'll put a timestamp to where I do explain it but this is basically um, all I have to say about this live segment so we're gonna go back to the pre-recorded stuff um, hopefully you're enjoying these videos this video so far I know it's been super long um, and yeah see you guys uh, next time I have a live recorded segment I guess one thing I should probably mention is that macro media flash MX 2004 is a really old free version of Adobe Animate. If you wanna see how to download that, then Jesse made a really good tutorial video, so I'll link that in the description under this section. Not a program that I ever used, but it seems like it could be helpful. Animating for free on your mobile device, a task that is not easy, but can be done. First and foremost comes the decision making. If you really wanna do lip sync, then an app called Flip -a Clip is probably what you're gonna to wanna to go with. The only problem with Flip -a Clip is it has a fat watermark right in the corner. Technically, if you had a solid color background and nothing went past the watermark, you could get rid of it in post just by covering it up with a solid color box, but I think that's too much work just to do some lip sync. <laughs> What I recommend for mobile animation is not doing lip sync, actually, and drawing everything in an app called Metabang Paint. It has a little bit of a learning curve, but it's a very powerful program that I use all the time. 90% of my art on Instagram is actually drawn using Metabang Paint. <coughs> Follow me at Sporknutfork. <coughs> Since I'm sure a lot of you haven't used it, though, uh, here's a very basic live tutorial session on how to draw your character. Hey guys, so I'm back again with another live recording session um, where I'm going to show you how to use the MetaBank app, which looks like this on the home screen. So um, we're just going to be starting in 
right here. First of all, actually, I should probably say sorry about the orientation of this because since I have a phone, I cannot turn it sideways, so I can't can't really do that. But anyway, uh, let's get into the actual tutorial part of how to draw a character on this app. First of all, you're going to come over here and click New Canvas and click well, New Canvas, or you can browse and import an image, uh, import from another app, take a photo. Uh, for us drawing, we're just going to be using a new canvas. Uh, what you want to do is go see this bar right here. We're going to select pixels. We're going to width 1920, height 1080. Now, if you remember earlier when I was talking about how you can do 1280 by 720, that's another viable option that you can do in here. Anyway, after you do that, you're going to click done, like I just did, uh, and it opens up the app. Now, it's going to look like this. This is going to be open. You can close that just by sliding it. Um, this is going to be your canvas. Now, the first thing you're going to do, if you go to this button down here, and if your device supports um, the pressure sensitivity, then you can turn on pen pressure. And you don't even need to have a pen um, hooked into it. Some There are some uh, uh, tablets that you can connect to uh, phones and iPads and all that. But we're just going to use pressure sensitivity like this. So I have no, no tablet, no anything. And as you can see, if I draw lightly to hard to light again, it has a pressure sensitivity. And you don't need this on. I just think it looks a little nicer. Now what you're going to do is come over to this layer button down here. So just make sure you're on an empty layer. And if you want to be adding layers to draw on, you're going to be doing color layers like this right here. I'll show a little bit later, but that's what we're going to do. Now, this is where you decide um, your colors over here. So if you, I wanted to draw in pink, it'd be this, uh, white, that. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do. I draw all my sketches, and you've seen if you were watching this entire video, that my doodles and stuff are drawn in red because I, I don't know, drawing in red helps me a lot. And then you can just draw in. And if you want um, correction because you're not very stable with your hand, which I normally do if I'm drawing on my phone. The correction slide, if you go up to where it shows your pen and just slide over, uh, we have correction. We also have anti-aliasing, which you want to be turned on. Otherwise, when you're drawing, it's going to look like this. And when you zoom in, it looks all jagged. So turn on anti-aliasing so that it looks a lot smoother. And display brush cursor, which is this versus this doesn't do too big of a difference unless you have a pen i leave it on anyway now for correction this is up to you i do about 10 to 15 when drawing so that it's nice and smooth and follows behind my touch and then we can get nice smooth lines now this is basically where you draw your poses of your character like i mentioned earlier i think i mentioned this earlier don't do lip sync if you're on mobile unless you're using flip a clip which the premium version costs money. So if you're down to spend money on this, I would suggest getting a flip clip. But if not, then the lip sync is near impossible to do without a actual iPhone or Android animation app. So just draw all your poses with an open mouth and a closed mouth. And honestly, that's all you have to do. So I'm gonna cut to having all my things drawn and I'll be back uh, when I'm done with that. All right, guys, I'm back. I haven't finished, but uh, one thing I'm going to mention is draw all your body parts on their own layer. So, like, say this is my head. Just come over to the layers, add with the plus button, color layer, and it adds a blank layer. And clipping mask right here does what you would expect if you've used Photoshop. We have blend modes. We have alpha. This is all going to be mostly used for coloring, but... Uh, for now, I'm just sketching out a character. I want to do a, a stick figure again because I did a stick figure with the computer section, so it seems appropriate to do it. Again, I did a thick stick figure for that one, so maybe I'll do like a regular stick man here. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll draw my stick man, and I'll be back uh, once I'm done. So yeah, instead of fast forwarding, I decided I'm just doing cuts for this because it makes the video a little shorter and I don't want the video to be longer than it has to be. So I'll be back in a second.
All right, this is basically the character. It doesn't look nice, but it looks passable. Um, I've gone over it a little bit on here on purpose just to show you guys that um, what you're going to have to do if you want to erase is click right here where your brush is. So you can switch between brush and eraser and just erase. And the eraser keeps the correction that you chose prior. And if you want it to be a soft eraser for whatever reason, you can turn on soft edge. But we're going to be keeping hard edge for now. And you can just erase and switch back to pencil, add, and then do that. Um, if you want to undo, I don't know if you caught this, but the undo button is in the bottom left. And also redo. So if I undid something, I can do it again. So I can do like this, undo that, bring it back. And yeah, so that's basically what we're going to be doing here. Um, I kind of feel like I should make a character that actually looks good. Uh, but at the same time, I'm kind of too lazy to do that. So what I'm going to do is make the head thicker. And to do that, I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Uh, do click this button right here, which is going to be our transform button. Uh, click, oh, I guess drag down on this corner to scale it. I'm going to scale it in just like that. Actually, I'll do it on the outside. That way it looks a little thicker. Maybe I'll do the same for the arms. Fix that. Okay. That looks fine. That looks fine. That's passable, right? So this is our first pose right here. And then you would go, um, if you wanted to merge these, you could, you can also do a folder by clicking the plus button, coming over here to folder, clicking that, closing the folder by clicking on it and dragging all of your layers, oops, dragging all of your layers into the folder just by dragging them on top. Uh, go from bottom to top so that they come back in the correct order. So if you open this, you can see they're all still there, but now they're right like in, right inside one layer. So it's a little bit easier to handle. Now, what you're going to do is do your other poses basically the same way. Since I have the body and the head already drawn and the arms are on their own layer, I'm not actually going to redraw everything. So I'm going to click this duplicate button right here, duplicate my folder, open it, go to my arms, and what I'm going to do is take the eraser tool, just erase this. Oops, we're going to have to turn off this layer visibility. So that's not in the way. We're just going to erase this arm and duplicate this arm. Click the transform, flip to flip it horizontally. Click free up here, maybe transform it down. Something like that. Then you can have arms to the side. Uh, you can do basically whatever you want. Honestly, you get the point. You can add basically whatever you want and make it really your own. You can draw a stick figure like I've done here. You can draw odd ones out clone. You can draw whatever you want. Um, just make sure it looks how you like it. Uh, yeah. So after you do that, um, the easiest way to do is import your background. Now I don't really have a background in mind so i'm just going to do a color layer and just draw a background here so we're going to grab this bring it down to the bottom and i'm just going to leave the lines red so what's good is good with the red we're going to click this color so that you can see the color wheel what goes good with the red is blue because it's on the opposite color of the color wheel so we're going to put some blue behind here i'm going to click this click bucket and paint that in and we're going to come with a new layer color layer Come up to a white, maybe, and just color in the head white. So that's not filled in blue. We don't want that to be blue. Maybe you do want that to be blue. I don't know. Your character, your decisions. You can do whatever you want. But let's just say we want something like this. This is what we want, right? I, this doesn't look good, but this is what we want. I'm not even going to draw a face. Actually, you know what? Sure, I'll draw a face, too. We'll give him a smile. There we go. It's a very derpy face. We'll make it a little smaller. And I'll put it up there. There we go. See, look at this little friend. So once we have this, we have both of our poses. We have this pose and we have this pose. We export both of them as their own. So we're going to click uh, these three lines. We're going to click export PNG files and PNG. If you wanted a transparent background, you would click PNG transparent and just click save image. And that's that image. And then we're going to turn on the other pose, turn off the other pose, 
do the same thing, export as a PNG, save it, and now all of the photos are in our camera roll. Uh, that's the end of this live recording session. It's a little shorter than the other one. I'm going to hopefully edit it down a little bit, maybe get rid of some of my plosives that happened, uh, get rid of some of my dead space. And yes, so thank you for still watching this video, and we'll get back to the regular recorded segment. After you have your drawings done, just put them in your editing app of choice. For Apple users, the number one free app for me is what you would probably expect, iMovie. Just import your audio, import your images, disable Ken's burn, zoom out, and you're all good. You can also reuse those drawings, add in new ones, and overall have a very simple but effective animation video. For Android devices, you're going to need to find an app that allows you to combine images and audio. I've seen good things about KindMaster, but the free version has a watermark, and nobody likes watermarks. So I'd say just look around until you find something that works. I think CNU actually made a video all about Android animation, so um, I'll link to that in the description under this section. When it comes to editing animation, there isn't really much else that needs to be added that I haven't already covered. If you want music, then this is where you would add that, but make sure it's not too loud and it's royalty free. You can also add an end card if you want, just make sure it's 20 seconds or less. This is a pretty short section, but I couldn't really fit this <laughs> anywhere else, so yeah. Thumbnails! <laughs> The first thing people see before they click on your video, other than the title I guess, you need a thumbnail that will draw people in when they see it in their recommended. And by drawing people in, I don't mean clickbait, I just mean eye grabbing. My basic setup for thumbnails utilizes the rule of thirds. On one side I put my animated character, letting people know that this video is an animation or about animation. This character will take up about half, maybe a little less of the thumbnail. Next to that and near the top I use large text that will usually overlap the character slightly. For the text you don't need to type the entire title, just the important part. As long as it makes a little sense grammatically then you'll be fine. At this point there's a lot of dead space under the text so I grab some of my favorite drawings from the video, I put about two of them right there. Give everything a white stroke so it stands out and takes up more space. For the background I'll usually put a blurred Google image of some Something that relates to the topic. Also add some color changes, but that's usually it. Something I recommend is having a symbol or something that tells returning viewers the video is by you. Jaden Animations, lower left corner of her thumbnails have a little watermark. Map hat, green text, and sometimes the Game Theory logo? Cartoon Conspiracy, that folder thing on the side. <laughs> Whenever you see these, you know exactly who the video is made by. I recommend doing just, just not in the lower right corner. That's where the um, time code goes, so it's gonna block it. This also ties into consistency. If your thumbnails are all over the place, then it looks really unprofessional. You want them clean, simple, recognizable, and consistent. Me, but Spork, what do I make my thumbnails in? Ah, good question. Uh, basically just use whatever you draw in. If you're on computer, you can use this program called Pixlr. It's basically just online Photoshop, but whatever you draw in will usually work. Look at you, about to upload your first video. Good job, you made it. It's not over yet though. Make sure your title is short and sweet, fill in your description with anything you need. I usually put the title again, then an actual description, uh, then finally a bunch of promo. For tags, just add anything that relates to the video. I suggest putting your channel name as well so that when people look you up, specifically, uh, they'll find your video. For the upload, I suggest using Unlisted at first and changing it to public later. If you don't know, Unlisted is where a video is on your channel but can't be seen. The only way for people to view it is with a direct link. This means you can send your video to friends early, they can look it over, spot any editing mistakes, that kind of thing. While it's Unlisted, you can add your end screen. This way you can link to your channel and videos just by clicking on this fancy button right here and add them like so. You can also add some cards for polls or links just by going over here, skipping to where you want in the video, and choosing what type you want. After you've finalized everything, go switch it to public. Probably want to promote yourself so people can find your video, so post the link on Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Most Discord servers have a promote chat, so put it in there. There's also where you can find a lot of other small creators, so go make some friends. Don't know any animation Discord servers? You could join mine. Link in the description. Upgrading can be hard, especially if you get used to what you're using. That being said, upgrading from what I've shown in this video is 100% necessary. That then begs the question, what do I invest in first? Well, I suppose the number one thing you should probably invest in first is yourself. Aww. I know I sound like a fortune cookie, but the main thing people look for in these channels is energy, personality, and the ability to tell stories. If you work on that first, then you're bound to go places. For actual equipment that costs actual money, first thing you probably want is a computer if you don't already have one. Animating on the phone is very restricting, so if you don't have a computer, I would recommend getting one. Plus, if you don't end up continuing animation, computers are nice to have for millions of other things. After that, and this might just be the voice actor in me, uh, but I would recommend getting an actual okay microphone. Mics can be a little pricey, but good audio quality is kind of a must. If you're just doing it for YouTube, then a USB microphone is usually fine. A snowball or a fi fine would be perfect. After that, maybe look into getting a tablet. I would actually say get a tablet before a microphone if you like drawing more than recording, since you can make drawings 
faster and more free-flowing. I use a Wacom into a small and it's been great. Finally, I get an actual animation software. There are free ones like Krita, but that's only frame by frame, so something like Animate or Toon Boom would probably be a lot better. Of course, this is just how I would go about getting these, but any order is probably fine. So you made it through the video. Congratulations! This was an extremely long video to script, and I'm sure editing was really fun, right, future me? One thing I kind of put off mentioning was the whole gotcha thing. I don't want to get into it too much, but I feel like they could actually make good content with a little bit of editing to the format. For the ones using it for story time videos, I ditch the speech bubbles and do voiceover. If I wanted to read, I'd do my English homework instead of being on YouTube. If you're doing them for like those series I've seen, uh, get actors. It's not that hard to find people that are getting into the VO industry that will actually do free stuff. Just put out a casting call video on YouTube and you'll find people. Anyways, like I said, I don't really want to get too in depth on my thoughts about the whole gotcha thing. Anyways, that's basically it for this video. I'm not going to put any fan art in the end card again because it feels like they should go in actual animation videos. Uh, hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, drop a little subscribe. I don't know. No? Okay, that's cool. Let me know if you want to see more tutorial videos. I can go a lot more in depth on a lot of these topics. I could do... I've been thinking about doing a lip sync tutorial. Domix has a good one, but I feel like having more than one source could be great. Anyways, I'll see you guys whenever the next video comes out. Stay strong, stay creative, and stay hungry. See you guys.